welcome back. Um, we'll just carry on with uh, questions or comments if you'd like to say anything or ask anything. Um, please feel free. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Is there an energetic shift when the per when the seeing happened? Was there an energetic shift when the seeing happened? Um, what do you mean by an uh, energetic shift? Um, Tony Parsons mentions an energetic shift, energetic shift when he was walking in the park, yeah. and Susan Seagal when she um, was hit at the bus stop. Did anything like that happen for you? Could, sorry, could, could you hear? Yeah. You can't sorry. hear. So I, I'll I'll just repeat it. Okay. So the question was. Um, <clears throat> Did a uh, uh, energetic shift happen happen for me? Um, I think you have to you have to be really careful when you're talking about this because um, you know we we. <laughs> We we love those stories of people who have who have had transformations or energetic shifts or enlightenment experiences or awakening experiences and um, <clears throat> and then what happens is we we end up so if I sit here and say yes I've had a energetic shift or yes I've had a whatever experience or my then what's going to happen is you're going to start looking for that. I mean, the, the seeker will latch onto that and start looking for the energetic shift or the um, awakening experience. Or um, so this, this is what this is what I always say is that no, nothing nothing happened to me. You know that that's exa that's what I was waiting for. As a spiritual seeker, I I. Um, I, I had read all these stories as well. I, I had read the uh, all the books and the, the teachers who said that they had an energetic shift, or they had an awakening, or enlightenment, or they were just they were they were you know, in the supermarket one day and their their eye fell away, or you know, and and, uh, <laughs> and these. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny now, but you know, it's when you. When you're really caught up in this stuff, this is this was like this was the most serious thing in the world, you know. That I, to to, because uh, <laughs> I wanted that. I I wanted my eye to fall away, you know. <laughs> well, I I wanted the energetic shift. I wanted the um, the transformation. I I I wanted it. Um. So I I, mean, I and I I uh, for years, you know, I I. I Desperately try to make this happen. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I, I tried everything to, um, I mean, uh, to, to awaken. I, I, was, I was desperate to awaken. And I, I, <laughs> I, I tried everything, you know, I, I, um, I, meditation, hours and hours every day, self inquiry, uh, um, sitting, watching thoughts, trying to be present with everything, just anything, you know, and, and, and anything to to awaken. And, and <clears throat> what became clear after um, after a while was that it was it was really an impossible task because um, yeah, how how can how can I a separate self how can how can I, a separate me, awaken from the dream of being a separate me? Because surely of everything that I'm doing to try and get rid of me is me. Everything that I everything that I'm doing to try and um, get rid of the seeker is the seeker. <clears throat> um, that's my understanding. That's why I was wondering if there was an energetic shift oh, because it's something yeah. else that's happening to so you. I, I'm coming to that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> I 
I could give you the short answer, which is no. I could give you the... Um... <laughs> <laughs> but then it's, it's not really a no, you see, because it's the wrong question. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you didn't, did you have an energetic shift? You, well, you'll, you'll see, um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, I mean, so I, I, I tried everything to uh, awaken, and um, what be clear, became clear after a while was that it, wasn't, it was never going to happen, as long as I was trying to awaken. There was someone there trying to awaken. So there was someone there. And I had heard that there was supposed to be no one there. And so so someone, someone was trying to get to the place where there was no one. So, <laughs> uh, because that's what some teachers seem to be saying. You know, some teachers seem to be saying that, that, that they, they used to be someone, but now they're no one. And so I thought, well, something must have happened. Something must have happened, so it can happen to me too. If it happened to them, it can happen to me. But nothing that I did seemed to work, so I, I tried um, giving up. I thought, well, in that case, you know, if doing doing is the problem, so I'll stop doing. There's any any practice, any method or practice is as long as there's someone here doing a practice to try and get rid of the someone, there's someone there doing a practice. So I, so I tried um, giving up. So I thought, right, I'm, I'm going to do nothing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not do a practice. Because secretly I thought that that would lead to the... <laughs> <laughs> and also that, that's what some teachers seem to be saying, was that, no, 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 there's, there's nothing you can do. Some teachers were saying, yeah, there's something you can do. And some teachers were saying, there's, there's nothing you can do. So I tried, I tried doing nothing. But of course, that was just n another form of seeking. There was someone there rejecting practices. No. Basically, then that so that was my new practice. You see, that that became my new practice was was to to not do a practice, to do nothing. So that didn't work. And so then I tried. Um, well, I, I just tried. Well, I tried giving up. I said, well, in that case, I'll just I just give up. So I tried. I tried giving up because secretly I thought that <laughs> if I if I give up, then maybe this this shift or this whatever I'd read about will, will happen. Um, so that didn't work. So then I thought, well, in that case, maybe it's just a question of waiting for it. Maybe there's nothing I can do, and and not doing is the same as doing. So I'll I'll just wait. Maybe it will just happen or not. Because I still had this idea that something was going to happen. So then, the, you, so you had someone there waiting for something to happen, waiting to be no one. <laughs> because again, that's what some of the teachers seem to be saying: was that well, there's nothing you can do. You just have to wait. Maybe it will happen or not. Uh, so some teachers were saying, well, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do, except come to my meetings. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe it will happen because it's happened. It's happened to me, and it happened to some other people. So I still believed in all of that. I still believed all of that. So I, n I never went to any meetings, but I I started. I was waiting because I thought. But of course, um, there was still someone there waiting for something. I was waiting for my idea of what was supposed to happen. So, <laughs> so waiting didn't work. <laughs> so then I I just thought well. By this point, there was there was a lot of um, frustration and 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 real uh, real uh, despair, really, of the whole thing. Because I thought, well, maybe this awakening thing or whatever I thought it was at the time, maybe uh, it just happens to a few special people. Maybe I, it's just not going to happen to me. Because again, that's what some some teachers seem to be saying was that. It's it's awakening strikes. It's like a lightning bolt that strikes one in a million people or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. So um. So I thought, well, or maybe it's just grace, you know. So of course I start waiting for grace. <laughs> um. And that didn't didn't work either. So. So.
so really the whole thing just ended in um frustration and and uh despair and all I was left with was was Jeff's inability to awaken that's what I was left with was Jeff's failure to awaken, Jeff's failure to be no one, Jeff's failure to have an energetic shift or transformation of consciousness or enlightenment or blah, 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 blah. Um, I, knew it, I mean, I knew it was in the midst of that despair that you know what was discovered was that um, this, this seeker, the, the one who is waiting for enlightenment, the one who is waiting for some transformation, the one who is waiting for an energetic shift or whatever. That's, it's, that's just a, it's just a story. It's the story of someone waiting for something. Um, and that's just a story ap appearing here. It's the story of someone waiting for something. Or it could even be this, you see, even if I had managed to have the energetic shift or the transformation, it would still be a story. It would be a story that I've had the energetic shift, I've had the transformation, I've had the awakening. It would still be there's some sort of, there's, it's, it's like an ownership. So um, what, what, was, what was seen through was um, this story of someone waiting for something. We're seeing that this is fundamentally, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't what I am, this story of someone waiting for something. Um, so it, it was the it was the the seeker that that um, it's the seeker that's that's seen through in the end. Um, so then then you might ask, well, how did that happen? The, the seeing through it was was that some sort of event that happened to you? And this this is why it's almost impossible to talk about because the mind, so thought operates in the world of cause and effect, in the world of um, what happened to you or didn't happen to you, or what did you experience or not experience. Um, so this this seeing didn't happen to me. You see, this this seeing w was always here. It's 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 what's here now. It's not my seeing or your seeing. It's it's. Um, It, it it had always been there. Um, this presence, or, or call it whatever you want, you see, because in the end you can't talk about it, because it's not in it. But whatever, life, life had always been here. And within life there had been this story of someone looking, some someone looking for something, someone waiting for an energetic shift or a transformation of consciousness. or. A, um, So nothing happened to me. You see, it was all that apparently happened was the see was um let's put it really simply, I stopped waiting for something to happen. So what's wrong with this, you see? Who cares about some future energetic shift or transformation? It, it's meaning it becomes meaningless. Absolutely that's that's the seeker, that's that's all food for the seeker. So if you know if I sit here and say Yes, an energetic shift happened, and it might happen to you, although it won't really happen to you. You see, we can get really clever with language. You can get really clever with language over this stuff, but it's all the same thing, really. It's like it's like ownership. It's like it's um, so. I might not say yes. I've had a shift. I might say something like, yes, there has been a shift here. And the shift might happen. The, what, what I'm sharing that cuts through all of that. That's, that's all in the dream. That's all in the dream. It's just um, it's not another way to separate myself from, from you. If I were to, you know, it, this isn't about something that's happened or hasn't happened to me. That, that's the seeker talking. You know, that's, that's exactly the dream that's, that's seen through. Um, the dream that anything was going to happen to me. So you see, I I was waiting for something to happen to me. But the point is, the one who was waiting for something to happen to them was just a story appearing in, in life. And life isn't something that's going to happen to you. Life is already happening. So the story of 
someone waiting for something to happen to them. It's just something appearing in life, which is which was already happening. So it, in a sense, it's already happening. It's not that it's going to happen to you. It's already happening. Life is the shift. Like li life is the energetic shift, or whatever you want to call it. Um, because it's it's already happening, yeah. and that's what in waiting for something to happen i was i was missing this which is always happening which is already happening so i i really couldn't i can't sit here in all honesty and say that anything happened to me uh, or what i share in these meetings is is um is what everyone see, sees in the end is that this seeker is just a story it's not really what you are and whether the seeker is looking for enlightenment or an energetic shift, it's really the same thing. You see. Um, so that that's the real freedom is to recognize that um, nothing's going to happen to you. Of course, you know, um, you can have all sorts of experiences. You can go off and you can have all sorts of experiences. Um, an event is always in time. So um, any happening, to say something happened to me, um, implies time. And what I'm trying to point to here is this, this timeless presence that, that, that you are. And... Um, so even to sit here and say, yeah, something happened to me. It's just it's just to go back into my story. Even if it was, you know, a uh, energetic shift has happened, it's still going back into the story of something happened. It's just something else to hold on to. Yeah. Something else to hold on to. I, I, yeah, I used to believe that. I did. Ye like years ago when, when this was seen, when what I'm sh sharing here was, was seen, like, there was a while where I it's like, thought he wanted to own that, that seeing. So yeah, for a while I, I went around thinking, yeah, I, I've had a shift. I'm different from you. I'm, I'm somehow different because I've had a shift and other people haven't. And I, in the end, even that, that was seen through. That's just another... Um, so because then you you become part of a club, you see, you become part of the um, the shift club, <laughs> and uh, everyone wants to be part of a club because then you you can you can come to meetings and and you can sit there all smugly because you you've had this shift and you can gather with other people who you think who share the same story as you and they think they've had the shift as well and you can form a club and start to celebrate how how wonderfully shifted you are and <laughs> and all, all those poor. Those poor people who haven't had the shift yet, you know, you can kind of look down on them and make jokes about. It. It's all silly, you know. It's talk. About, I mean, that's. I mean, there's no club here, you know. There's no club. That's why it's freedom. There's no club. Um. So yeah, I mean. You, you can't you can't own in the end you can't own anything you can't even own I've had a shift you, you, you don't even get that you know this is it's just total it's total um freedom I mean I mean imagine the burden of having to to walk around thinking that you've had a shift I mean what a terrible burden that 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 would be to have to hold up that that identity or the, or that you're enlightened or that you're awakened or that you've lost lost yourself or you, in the end it's just another identity I think you have to think you have to speak because of the perception of the shift doesn't necessarily mean that I mean you ha you're going to be thinking that way um, what I'm trying to say is that if you have a shift you're not necessarily there. The, the the person isn't there anymore. I mean, the self isn't there, and and the seeing happens, everything happens, but there's no ownership. Per se. You've been to too many Tony, Tony Parsons <laughs> meetings, I think. Read his books. Several times. After the shift, there's no one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's the good one. I mean, that, that before and after, you know, it's time. It's, it's a story, before and after, before and after. First there's someone, then there's no one. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, um, I, I used to go around, you know, thinking that I was no one. But you see, it's, in, it's ingenious because I thought I was no one, or, or I, I thought there was no one here, you see. Um, but very subtly, that, that had become an identity for me. So I thought I was no one. So I, in order to maintain my identity as no one, what, what, what did I have to do? Yeah, I had to see, I had to look out at the world and see, uh, you're still someone, you're still a someone, you're still a someone, uh, you're no one. You see, that, <laughs> that's what I had to do to maintain this idea that I was no one. Otherwise, I would have no way of knowing. No way of, you have no way of knowing that you're no one. It's another, it's a, this is ingenious the way it separates. Ingenious. It's ingenious the way it carries on separating and still believes, and, and believes that it's not separating. It's ingenious. But that oneness is doing that. Oneness is making you think that, or whoever. And if, if you're not, if you're no one, you can also see that there is no one else. This is when it gets really tricky, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, it doesn't literally mean that you're no one, you see, because that's just another identity. There is no one. Se there is no one here separate from life. So. Um, but then it gets tricky because then you say things like, "Well, this is no one. This is no one talking to no one." No one's talking, no one's listening. Yeah. Um, but if, if there's really no one, if there's really no one here, then there's then there's really no one to talk. There's no one to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> But on some level, you see, this is, this is the thing where, it, um, of course, ult ultimately, it's all oneness. So ultimately, of course, this is oneness appearing as everything. But within oneness, there's, there's the appearance. There's the appearance of me, you, tomorrow, yesterday, um, uh, pa past, future, bigger, smaller. All, all of that carries on, you see. So, yeah, it's no one talking to no one, but it's always been no one talking to no one. It's always been that, always. This isn't, this isn't, it's not that a shift happens and it goes from someone talking to no one talking. It's always been no one talking, always. So then you, you can't say there's a shift because nothing shifts. It's not that one, someone disappears and then, then there's no one. You can't say then there is no one because then is time. You can't say first there was someone and then there was no one. It's only a someone that would say... <laughs> It's only a someone that would say, then there is no one. Because in order to have a conversation with, with, with anyone, you have to, you have to, there has to be the appearance of someone. You have, to, you have to assume that there's someone there. Otherwise, there's literally, there is no one to talk to and nothing to say. So this is why it's, it's very tricky. In the, in the end, it's not no one versus someone. No one is someone. No one is someone. This is no one appearing as someone. So it's not that there was someone here, but now there's no one here. Always. Always, yeah. So the moment you say there's no one, it's not true. There's someone. Yeah, but you can. 
What's yours? Yeah, so time is 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 the story. Time is in is in the story. You know. So this uh, life itself is is beyond time. It's beyond time and and the timeless actually, because both time and timeless are just concepts appearing here in life. But again, it's not about getting rid of those concepts. So the concept of time is really useful, you know. But it's um, Yeah, my my experience isn't fundamentally different from anyone's. You see, it's very. This is very ordinary. This this is. Yeah. Memory? I have memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No one has memory. <laughs> memory happens for no one. Yes, yeah, so me memory appears. Every everything appears, you see. So this is. So it's uh, everything. Appe this is just total freedom in which everything appears. So thought, thoughts, m memories appear. Uh, a thought that I need to um, get the plane tomorrow appears. You know, it's all. It's the same as you. It's no. It's no different. It's just that what's what's seen is is just that I. Um, None of this is owned. You see, it's it's, uh, but it never was. Is the point? It's it's not that um, I managed to stop owning it. <laughs> it's just that thoughts appear, sounds appear, feelings appear. Did you and ever have difficulty remembering? Oh, I used to like this or that. So I had the experience a long time ago. Mm. It's an experience. I had difficulty remembering. Oh, I like chocolate and I like boys. I, I it was a strange. You like chocolate and you like boys. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I like chocolate and I like girls. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, preferably. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all very funny. <laughs> I just, there was that experience a long time ago when it was very absorbed in uh, being around some enlightened Indian gurus. Th then I came back to New York and uh, the experience of no self was so profound that I had difficulty recalling what I liked and didn't like. Mm -hmm. And the body functioned and went on and all, but the, I just wasn't here in a sense that is not true now. Mm -hmm. The only thing I had was a sense of an energy ball in front like a foot in front of me and that way of being whatever you'd call it lasted mm. for around six months and then it yeah, dissipated. Yeah, all, all experiences come and go. Come and go, yeah, yeah. They only last a certain amount of time. All, all experiences, whether it's an experience of um, intense pain or pleasure or an experience of no self or an experience of being nowhere, it doesn't really matter what the content is. Um, all all ex experiences are always in time. So they, they have a beginning and they have an end and they come and go. And what happens, of course, is we, we end up looking for freedom within experiences. So yeah, we end I up thought that was you the way was, yeah. you're supposed to not have a self. Yeah. Because yeah. I had that experience. I thought, oh, well, then it would be like that again, I suppose. Yeah. It isn't. <laughs> no, I, it's... Um, yeah, because we're, we're always trying to... We have these experiences, you know, spiritual experiences, whatever you want to call them. I mean, even the, the most blissful, mind-blowing spiritual experience, lovely, beautiful, wonderful, but it comes and goes. It has to. It has to come and go. What, what we're looking for, what we really want is a, we want permanent, we want permanent 
experience. That's what, that's what we're looking for. But by its very nature, we want a permanent experience of peace or a permanent experience of no self or a permanent experience of whatever. But experience by its very nature, it, it comes and goes. So we end up looking for our freedom in something that inherently is unstable. It, it, it comes and nothing wrong with having like go off and have all like go off and have experiences. I mean thought can create infinite number of experiences, amazing experiences. But the real question is well, what's left when all experiences have have uh, come and gone? Even the experience of no self or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, um, so we we end up trying to get back to an experience that we had or we want to um, have some experience that, that we've read about but so what's wrong with this experience you know that's you see that's um, because right here in this experience you find all, all the freedom that you're looking for is it's, it's in in every experience because this is life what you seem to exude is an enthusiasm and a wonder in... in it's only because I'm performing, because we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a meeting. You're performing? <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should see me when I'm not doing these meetings. Sort of <laughs> and what does your wife say about you? <laughs> you have to ask her. Um, you see... Um, See, the, the, this is freedom. So I, I don't have to be a certain way all all the time. That, that's the beauty of it. That's the, as a seeker, you know, I thought I had I had to be peaceful all the time. I had to be happy all the time. I had to be what or I had to have no self all the time. Whatever, whatever I thought that meant, because it's meaningless. When you really look at it, it's meaningless. The experience of no self, it's not possible. Self is experience. You see, so the self, what you call the self, the me, the character, is the experiencer. So you can't um, you can't experience the absence of the experiencer. Do you experience your reactivity to life slightly differently now than say five ten years ago? That you're less reactive, say less angry or frustrated, whatever your thing or buttons were. Is it? And do you get through the say the frustration faster? Do you drop it faster? Those are two questions. Well, um, <clears throat> I don't think it really helps talking about Jeff and, 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 and what he is or isn't and how he's more this or less that. But, but yeah. Cause, um, no, 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 it's fine. I mean, it's, it's kind of sitting up here. You people are na naturally um, want to know. But it's in the end, it's not really about me, you see. That, um, I mean, the, the way I say it sometimes is that nothing's changed. Nothing's changed and, and everything's changed. So nothing's changed because they're still living of this life. They're still living of a very... Or, or, in a way, life now is more ordinary than, it's, than it ever was as a spiritual seeker. Because, of course, I'm no longer seeking the extraordinary. I'm no longer seeking... So then I can't even really call it ordinary, but, you know, it's it's... By ordinary, I just mean waking up in the morning and brushing my teeth and putting on clothes and walking, talking, going to the shopping, going to the doctors, whatever. All of that is this, nothing's changed. Um, and 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 everything's changed because. Because finally, that this this is this is seen for what it is, you know. Because before there was always someone there waking up in the morning, brushing their teeth and um, putting on clothes and, and walking out, walking outside, looking for something, looking for something beyond waking up, brushing teeth, putting on clothes, looking for something beyond that. So, which is the same as saying there was someone trying to escape. Trying to escape sadness, trying to escape anger, trying to escape pain. So I'm not saying that uh, certain things do and don't arise, because that that would be just conceptual. You see, yeah, um, so the the one who sits here and says I I don't experience pain anymore, 
that that person is at war with pain. The one who sits here and says, I, I don't experience, there's no anger anymore. That, that one is at war with anger. That's the only way you can say there is no anger. But there has to be more lightness within you, I think. Well, that, the, the would lightness, say. yeah, the lightness is is seeing that um, nothing. Um, that it's all it's all life. It's all life, and nothing is out of place here. Um, so there's like nothing to worry about so much, and no, uh, the, there would be less of because whatever less. is is it's accept- 24 percent less. <laughs> 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 it's um, put it this way: li- life is infinitely simpler. It doesn't mean that pain doesn't happen. It doesn't mean that a couple of years ago I was in, in bed with excruciating physical pain. But at the same time, it wasn't a problem. Of course, you know, the, I went to the doctors and had medicine and all that. All that played itself out. But it, there's there's like a, there's a fundamental o- okayness about everything. And it do- certainly doesn't mean that things go the way I want them to, because that's that's exactly the dream. That 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 is the dream. That's the dream. So I'm not saying it'll be easy to sit here and say, "Oh yeah, everything's wonderful, everything's oneness, every everything's perfect." It's easy to say when things are going your way. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to say that say that you're enlightened when things are going well for you, and and then you, or then you get diagnosed with cancer, or then you lose all your money. You know, then see how stable that the idea that you're enlightened is, you know, if, if, or, or even the idea that you're no one. You know. So the, the beauty of this is that there's no, there's no, um, I don't have to hold up any image of myself, so I'm free just, I'm free to be, to feel whatever I feel. And then the strange thing then is that, yeah, I, I guess you could, um, well, um, uh, I can't. I can no longer blame the world for anything. It's like, in a way, it's like total responsibility. I guess that's. It's not me taking responsibility, but there is. There is like a because it's seen that. Um, None of this happens to me. So, sadness, anger, fear, pain, blah, blah, blah. None of it happens to you. It, it just happens. There's a, there's a world of difference, the universe of difference between pain happening to you and pain just happening. And that, again, that's, that's the definition of suffering. Uh, actually, that's what the word literally means. To, to suffer means to, to undergo. It means something happening to you. So pain, if you notice, pain never happens to you. Pain, pain just appears. Pain, pain arises. Um, in that arising, it's not owned, it, but it belongs to no one. It's not owned by anyone. Um, but then this this ownership happens, so it becomes my my pain, and that's when all the trouble begins. You know, that's when the seeking my pain and trying to get rid of my pain. So I'm not saying pain doesn't arise. In a in a way, pain these days is is more more intense, more painful, because there's no longer anyone here with any idea that they can escape it. In a way, that that. But then that, why can you take the responsibility? Or then it's more my responsibility. You said a few minutes ago, that, so it wouldn't be that either. Say, say that again. A few minutes ago, you were talking about then you're taking on th- then it's like oh, your responsibility. Response, yeah. But then, but then th- it, when, that's not true either. No. But what what's left then is it's not there's a natural responsibility. So it's it's literally the ability to respond. For me, that's what the word responsibility really means: the ability to respond. So there's there's just there's a and then there, there can just be clear action. You know, it becomes very sim- Life becomes becomes very simple then. Life becomes difficult when you're fighting it. So there can just be a, a response to to pain, and and doing what's necessary, and um, um, yeah. But then, right at the heart of pain, there's no there's no problem. The 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 okayness that we're looking for, we think we need to get rid of pain, for that okayness to be there. 
it's the the okayness right, right at the heart, right at the heart of pain. So the um. But what did you mean when you said responsibility? Then you're more responsible. More able to respond. Oh, just able to respond. Mm. Yeah, because but well, it depends how you use the word. So yeah, because of of course, if you think, oh God, I'm in pain. Oh God, it's my responsibility. Yeah, people, responsibility. people who've been on the path years oh, ago right, anyway. Yeah. People were on the path a long time, then they get cancer. It's my God, I did no, that. Not, what not, did I do no, wrong? You know, and not they're blaming themselves and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. Because that—that's the suffering, isn't it? That's yeah, that, that what did I do be. to deserve this pain? And um, maybe I sinned in a previous life, or this is karma, or this is this is punishment for something, or uh, blah blah blah. That—that's that's um my responsibility. But underneath that. You could say there's just this natural responsibility, which is the, just the abil simply the ability to respond to life. Because in the end, of course, you're able to respond because you are life. It's not even you responding to something called life. Because that, that would imply two things, me and life. Mm. Your, your ability to respond is precisely because you are life. And life knows. There's this natural intelligence here that we just, we just seem to miss. So it's responding through you. That's how I put it. It's it's, it's, it's res responding through you. You know, life is living you. It's responding as me. As you. Yeah. As you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stereo. <laughs> <laughs> His responsibility. <laughs> yeah, hi. Um, it's hard to get that pain isn't personal if the pain signifies a life threatening condition and it's your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard to understand well, what is meant by. You know, yeah, pain. Um, or illness. Pain doesn't threaten life. No, well, because, I'm, I'm but it threatens your it. life. Yeah, that's the point. So, yeah, so it's so hard pain to... threatens your life, and your life is the life of the one who is in pain, the seeker. Yeah, it's... so in in um. In in pain, in, in like the rawness of pain, before before it's even called pain, before it's even called pain, what it's just it's sensation, right? It's just it's just energy, it's sensation passing moment to moment. I mean, even to call it pain is already to put a uh, a boundary around it to kind of shut it off from something that isn't pain. Um, to even to call it pain is to put it in time. But actually, you know, um, sensations mo moment by moment on on in time. It's um, so in in present sensation, moment by moment, there's no identity. There, there isn't anyone there who is in pain yet. There's just sensation, quite in, could be quite intense sensation. So then the ownership comes in, and so now it becomes my pain. Now, so there's I am the one who is in pain. I I am the one who is in pain. There's someone who is in pain. Pain is happening to me. There's a it's not the pain so much as the pain signifying an illness, you know, which I guess is a concept. But oh yeah. But you know, so say f say hypothetically somebody has surgery and they're being cut into, and then there's pain, and you know, it's it's hard to separate the the story. Uh, you know, it's hard to to get that it's not personal when something like but that it, is happening to yeah. you and there's a whole story around it about what you have and you know what the illness is and yeah so i'm not suggesting that you try and get that it's impersonal because that's just another concept as well that it's it's impersonal as opposed to personal you know well i think i just I, i'm i'm using that as an example because it's a very poignant example mm. that i have um you know a past experience with and what probably led me to the teaching and 
uh, was a serious illness that, you know, fortunately, you know, you know, we're only here, right? It's, It's only the here and now, and now I'm fine and I'm healthy, but it was, it was a trauma and it, it makes, uh, it made me think about, uh, mortality. Mm. So I guess one thing in an extreme situation like that, you know, one thing a seeker looks for is you want to find out if there's a part of Mm. you or me, you know, I said in, in quotes, given that, you know, what survives, does anything survive, you know, and then, uh, I so, guess it's all story. So where does I mean, that question I, come from? The, the question, does anything survive? Yeah. Where, where does it come from? Yeah. Why do we want to know? Uh, cause I had, because, because, you know, I had a life threatening experience that scared the living daylights exactly. out of me. Fear. So it's the exactly. fear of death. Yeah, exactly. It comes, that question comes from fear. Right. Does anything survive? trying to get the idea well it's not my life it's life well what does that mean you know when you have a really maybe and not just that story but in anybody's life we all have uh, so many really poignant stories and experiences physical pain emotional pain you know threats to well-being threats to physical life threats to emotional life uh, happy experience you know happiness uh, we all have so much uh, palpable experience that feels complicated and feels personal. Mm. And uh, I guess it's, the wish and the seeking, you know, get rid of that. in my case, it got triggered by a life-threatening experience and wanting to understand, well, what's mm. death? What does this mean? Um, I hadn't really started thinking of myself as an ego or something more than, you know, I was just in a total learning process mm. um, about what, what all this is, you know, Advaita, non-du- non-duality. Mm. What, what, what is this? It led me, it pointed me right to this. And uh, yeah. so I'm trying to just, you can't understand it in the mind, and I get that. But I wonder, there's, yeah, it's... Um, Trying to get what it means that there's just life and no one's life, and I guess looking for some peace in that. Yeah, it, but it, it it seems like a complete paradox, doesn't it? Because it life yeah. it seems personal, it feels personal, and yet then we, on some level, we know there's something here that isn't involved in that. So we start looking for that. We start looking for that. This impersonal. There's something beyond life. There's something beyond the person. Um, the point is. Um, it's supposed to feel personal. That's the point. Mm-hmm. So what we call the impersonal, we, we think we have to go beyond the personal to find the impersonal. Um, because the personal is time bound. You know, it's, it's impermanent. It's, so we start to look for, so the, the personal starts to look for something beyond the personal. So what, what I'm suggesting is um, It's there, right at the heart of the personal, right at the heart of what we call the personal. That's where that's where it is. It's not. It's not higher than the personal. It's not beyond the personal. It is, intimately, personal. It's the impersonal. Appearing as the most intimate personal experiences. There's no conflict. There's no division. Only in the in the mind, personal, impersonal, personal, impersonal. Which is it? So, you know, this. Everyone on some level has has a sense of this this space, this this kind of vastness, uh, something beyond this. You know, and I, I remember as a as a child, um, I think you know we all do, do this as children. We kind of look we look out at the world, look look at look the stars at night, and think, oh, there must be something beyond. There must be something beyond what I see. There must be something beyond. What I feel, what I see, what I what I hear. There must be something beyond this. But in the end, um, there's nothing beyond this. There's nothing beyond this. There's only this. There's nothing beyond life, because life is everything. 
and another way of saying that is um what's what's beyond this is this mm. this is this is the beyond we are living the beyond but we're looking for the beyond because we think it's beyond this is the beyond appearing mm -hmm. and it appears as the most intimately personal experience like it's lying in bed with you know excruciating pain that's intimately personal stuff that is that is the vastness it's the vastness appearing as mm. the experience of pain or, or sadness or whatever that, that that's the point so in mm, looking for the impersonal or, or, or trying to understand it um, in a way it's it's just a way of not facing life Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, and it's natural. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with this. This, this, is, this isn't to judge anyone because when you lie there in bed with excruciating pain, of course you're going to start to think oh, there must be something beyond this. That's where it all begins, right? If everything was okay, deeply okay, you would never look for anything beyond. <laughs> that's the, in a way that's the gift of suffering. Yeah. Yeah. So um. So I, I never found a beyond. Yeah. I never found a beyond separate from this. This is this is the beyond. We're living it. So it's going deeply into it. Like really just allowing Well, it's not even going you are deeply into it already. I mean you're <laughs> well, well or admitting it, yeah. <laughs> We're admitting Responsibility, it. Oh. responding to it as if this were I mean, the, 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 the ways in which we try and want, run away from our experience is incredible. I mean, especially, especially intense pain, and it's, it's natural, it's understandable. You know, so intense pain is happening, and, you know, years ago as a spiritual seeker, I, um, I developed all these methods to, to transcend, you know, so pain would happen, and I would, try and, um, I would try and accept the pain, love the pain, transcend, try and transcend the pain, or move through the pain, or go more deeply into the pain, or... Um, ignore the pain or and I think secretly what I really wanted was the pain to go away <laughs> these were all just tactics to make the pain go. E even the tactic of um, I need to I, I should accept this pain so I would sit there and try to accept the pain and sometimes I could and other times I wasn't able to accept it because it was too painful because that's that was my concept I should accept mm -hmm. More concepts. More concept, more suffering, actually. Yeah. Or I, I, I should be no one. If I was no one, or if I was enlightened, or if I was more spiritual, or whatever, this pain wouldn't be so intense. Or it's just um, they were all just ways um, to avoid what was there. And it's understandable because you think this this can't be it. This can't, this can't be it. But that's why pain, pain um, can be a great teacher. Because what does pain say? Yeah, this is it. This is life. This yeah. is life. Hello. Mm. This is life. Pain has a wonderful way, especially intense pain, of, of destroying all your concepts about pain or about about life. All your ideas that you're enlightened or that you're you're this wonderfully spiritual person or that you're the pain is like a um, or oh, actually, anything seen for what it is. It's like a, um, it's like the fire that burns up all your con life. Is the fire that burns up all your concepts about life in the face of pain? That's the true meaning of being no one. So that's the true meaning of being. But you are nothing in the face of life. Mm -hmm. Because literally, you are no thing. You are not separate from life. You are nothing in the face of life. It's total humility. Yeah. In you lose your specialness. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And 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 the pain itself it, it's not as, as the the pain isn't the worst worst of it what the worst of it is what you're th thinking. The story. Yeah. yeah that, so it's the story that, of so it's the story of my pain and how, this pain's going to last forever it's never going to go away I, this is going to kill this pain's going to kill me. It's basically it's, it's the it's the story of this pain is getting in the way of my life. Mm -hmm. That's the story at the root of it. This pain is in the way. It's blocking life. 
if I could just get rid of this pain. And by the way, I'm not saying don't go and see a doctor, don't get diagnosed, blah, of course, that's intelligent, anyone, you know, of course. I'm saying if you really want to know the truth about this, you know, um, the, the, the suff pain isn't suffering. Right. Yeah. The suffering is the story of your pain and the story of your attempt to be free from pain, mm -hmm. which isn't possible conceptually. So the suffering is the story of this is this pain's gonna kill me, it's gonna get worse, it's gonna kill me. What have I done to deserve this? It's gonna I'm not gonna be able to do all the things that I wanted to do. It, it gets in the way of your plans, doesn't it? Well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's in a sense that's why I said before yeah, it is a threat. Pain is a threat to your life. If that's your life, mm. you see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But what's your life is what's yeah. happening, what's right that's, in front of you yeah, now. Yeah, that's your life. That's your life. So pain can't threaten your life. Pain is actually pointing you back to your life, your, your true life. Right. So pain, then pain is it's not, it's, no, it's no longer a threat. It's painful because that's what pain is. Pain is painful. Mm. But it's, it can't it can't it can't threaten anything. There's nothing it can threaten. Mm -hmm. Pain can't threaten life. Because pain it's life. It's life appearing as pain. Pain can threaten your life, but only in the story. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Behind. There was a time when uh I was driving back from Manhattan to my place in Connecticut, and I had a kidney stone attack. That, I mean, for a man, that's the most painful thing you can imagine. Yeah. I mean, I had ones before. This one, I didn't faint. The last one, I faint. But what was fascinating about it is that the pain was so severe mm -hmm. that there was there was an implicit unity in it. I, 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 I didn't feel separate from it all. It was killing me. But... I didn't feel separate from it yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. From, it from was it killing all. you. Yeah. <laughs> but what what was also <laughs> interesting, I went through thoughts about, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening again to me. Mm. But then they even became absolutely, you know, not the story anymore. I mean, the story was even wiped out by the pain. And that made me realize, and, and this is what I wanted to ask you, Jeff, that the story also and the thoughts are also perfect expressions of of life too yeah. yeah but it's hard to accept that you know that they are i mean i had no choice i couldn't help but accept it in 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 that moment but how do you get that not getting it you know or that not acceptance is acceptance not getting it is getting it <laughs> not not getting it is also life appearing as not getting it mm -hmm. And then there's a subtlety that, well, you got to get that. Mm -hmm. You got to get that. You got to get that not getting it is really getting it, or else you're just not getting it. And, <laughs> and, and the truth is that sometimes, I think, I don't, you know, this, you just don't get it. And, and that's it. And that's it. You just don't get it. I mean, it's not that you, you know, you hold it in the context, I'm getting it now. It sucks sometimes. Purely sucks. And the acceptance, the absolute acceptance of that is the freedom, you know, but it doesn't always feel like it's free because you're not getting it at that moment, that you're not holding it in that relative acceptance. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and that's okay, too. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's okay, yeah. too, but that's hard to get, get that it's okay sometimes because yeah, so it's, it's so, excruciating. So it's hard to times. get, so what, then what yeah. you're left with is... is um, the one who finds it difficult, the one who finds it difficult to get, and that that's just something else appearing. The story, the the one who's finding it difficult, just difficulty can appear. That's what's appearing in in consciousness at the moment, also. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. This is a this is like a radically all inclusive. It's like radically all inclusive. It doesn't have to feel any particular way. That's that's why it's freedom. Freedom doesn't have to feel. Freedom freedom doesn't feel like freedom. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a five minute break. <laughs> <laughs> That's why.